Vice Chair, Department Hello, of Ophthalmology. Hello, and thank you for Please. the opportunity to participate nice to in today's symposium. It is a privilege and an honor for me to be here with you today. I'm going to be speaking about about an old question, which is whether or not normal tension glaucoma and primary opening angle glaucoma are one disease or disease. These are my disclosures. They're not particularly relevant for this. To understand this question, we need to remember the historical implications of prior research. There has been 150 years of controversy surrounding the vascular theory of glaucoma and the mechanical theory of glaucoma. Some ophthalmologists have believed that this disease is primarily pressure-driven, and others have believed that vascular supply plays a strong role. Unfortunately, we have only one measurable parameter, and that is intraocular pressure. Over time, this has assumed the role of a diagnostic parameter. There's a lot of scientific literature on intraocular pressure, target IOP, and intraocular pressure reduction in clinical practice. But this is dangerous, as we know, as a screening tool. For approximately 50% of patients have a statistically normal pressure at the time of diagnosis. So is normal tension glaucoma a separate disease entity from primary open angle glaucoma? This is an important clinical question affecting care, research, and public health. There are several factors we have to consider. Intraocular pressure, risk factor, optic nerve structure and function, and genetics. So are these two separate entities? Are they overlapping entities? Or are NTG and POAG a single continuous enti entity? which all can be called primary open angle. So is it possible to separate normal tension glaucoma from primary opening angle glaucoma? The name itself, normal tension glaucoma, implies that a measurement, intraocular pressure, can be used to differentiate these two entities. Statistically, primary open angle glaucoma was determined when an intraocular pressure was greater than 21 millimeters of mercury, and normal tension glaucoma was said to be present when the pressure was less than 21 millimeters of mercury. But can, I be, can IOP be used to differentiate these two? The reality of IOP measurement today is that transcoil measurement of intraocular pressure as we measure with a variety of tonometers, is not a true intraocular pressure and is affected by measurement, many measurement factors, such as corneal thickness or hysteresis. True IOP can only be obtained via intracameral cannulation. In addition, all tonometers have human and or instrument error. For, for example, with the Goldmont applination tonometer, there's a one to two millimeter measurement error. A single measurement to define a disease is clearly insufficient. We can use Goldman tonometry as our reference standard, but it is not a gold standard and certainly not the ground truth or the real intraocular pressure. There is no perfect tonometer. Essentially, an inaccurate measurement cannot define or separate two different diseases. So, to ask the question as to whether intraocular pressure can be used to differentiate normal pressure glaucoma and primary open angle glaucoma, the answer is clearly no. Can risk factors be used to differentiate NTG and G? Well, there are a whole variety of risk factors for glaucoma. These include intraocular pressure, but other risk factors as well, such as aging, retinal ganglion cell health, tissue biomechanics, genetic risk, myopia, CSF pressure, and so on. One way to divide these disorders would be to say that intraocular pressure plays a role only in POAG and not in NTG, and all these other factors are NTG, normal tension glaucoma, risk factors. 
But we know this is not the case. All of the glaucomas are affected by intraocular pressure, by the status of ocular biomechanics, increasing risk for myopia, perfusion of the optic nerve head, and aging. For example, worst perfusion, regardless of whether it's POAG or NTG, can be caused by disorders such as migraine headache, myocardial infarction, aggressively treated systemic hypertension, or atrial fibrillation. This, in turn, could alter the health of retinal ganglion cells, who might be less perfused, or tissue mechanics. These then will alter the whole course of the disease process. Perhaps the most important risk factor for progression is aging. Aging will affect all of the other risk factors. So as we get older, an intraocular pressure at every, any given level will cause worsening of the disease process. Genetic risk often becomes more apparent as the patient ages. Perfusion of the optic nerve worsens with aging. So all of the glaucomas are affected by these risks, not just NTG and POAG. So can POAG and NTG be used to differentiate these two diseases? The answer is also that it is not able to. What about the appearance of the optic nerve in the visual field? Can they be used to differentiate NTG and POAG? Different glaucomatous optic nerve phenotypes have been described by clinicians over time that range from those that are vasculopathic to pressure dependent um, and so on. However, all of these phenotypes are linked by the death of retinal ganglion cells and their axons that collected the optic nerve to cause topographical change in the optic nerve along with disc hemorrhage. The damage is occurring primarily at the laminar cribrosa, but is transmitted to the post-laminar intraorbital optic nerve, to the lateral geniculate nucleus, and all the way back to the cerebral cortex. All of these linked structural changes in glaucoma occur regardless of the phenotypic appearance of the optic nerve. Our group has studied this as well, and sometimes we find details of the visual field or optic nerve examination that appear to be different in the high and low tension glaucomas, but they're very difficult to separate out in clinical practice. For example, here is a patient who has had progressive loss of the rim at the white arrow between 1993 and 2012 a disc hemorrhage in 2003, and increasing parapapillary atrophy in 2012. Does this patient have normal tension glaucoma or primary open angle glaucoma? Here's another patient who has inferior nerve fiber bundle defect on the picture on the left and superior paracentral visual field loss as noted in the two visual There is also an inferior nerve fiber bundle defect and ganglion cell layer defect in that right eye. But can we differentiate NTG and POAG from these phenotypic appearances? The reality is that the appearance of the optic disc, because of its wide variability, both physiologically and in the disease, the appearance of the optic nerve in the visual field by themselves cannot be used to differentiate NTG and POA. So how are we going to approach this in the future? This is a, the cover of an edition of The Economist magazine referring to the pandemic, where the great scientific advances we made with things as, such as a vaccine in less than a year uh, suggest that we should be able to make greater advances in the future in all fields of medicine. We have rapidly changing paradigms that allow us to investigate blood flow in the retina and treatments that are geared towards 
potentially increasing mitochondria and ways to measure tissue metabolism and oxygenation. The future for these things using applied genetics um, is indeed bright for all of us. And perhaps that's the best way to approach this question. Is normal tension glaucoma a separate disease entity from primary opening up angle glaucoma? Surely they overlap tremendously. There may be diseases that are purely intraocular pressure dependent, and maybe there are some patients who have a purely IOP independent process. But the best way to tease out these differences is going to be through genetics. Certainly we have diseases now that are known to be related to certain genes, such as myosilin variants, optoneuron, but there are going to be a variety of different genes and group of genes which will be better able to differentiate these disease processes. The future is bright. This is a list of many uh, gene defects um, in glaucoma. It was published by Drs. Wiggs and Pasquale a number of years ago. And it holds the key to this process, that precision medicine and genetics will be able to differentiate all of the diseases we currently lump together as normal tension glaucoma and primary open angle glaucoma. So in conclusion, NTG and POAG are part of the same clinical spectrum. Both all these disorders are characterized by progressive damage to the structure and function of the optic nerve. There are pressure and independent, pressure independent risk factors, um, but they're all united by the fact that these disorders are pressure sensitive, meaning lowering the pressure helps us treat the disease. I want to thank you for your attention um, and for your consideration, and congratulations once again on a wonderful symposium.